for me personally to be a blood biker, it's something that I've wanted to do for quite a long time. Motorcycling's been part of my life for as long as I can remember. But then I happened to find out about the blood bikes and thought that that was an excellent way of actually putting back into society. When I was 20, which is back in 1986, another lifetime, I had a serious road traffic accident. And I've been trying to find a way of giving back the NHS since then. Blood bike saves the NHS a huge amount of money. If we weren't transporting things free of charge, the hospitals would have to be using taxis. The rates are extortionate for some of the distances involved, so it offers a vital service in terms of speed. We were formed in January of 2014, and given the blood bikes actually started in 1962, we're actually probably one of the youngest groups around, but in that time we've grown substantially both in terms of numbers of members, the number of jobs we do, and obviously the things that we transport as well. Well, we carry all sorts of products. We carry blood products, we carry emergency medical equipment. We've had requests to take urgent theatre equipment, theatre instruments from site to site. So anything really, if it's urgent and it can go on a bike. But what people might not know is that we transport human breast milk. If the mother has a problem with feeding or isn't available to feed, the baby needs breast milk. In the first few days after having a premature baby, it can be an extremely stressful time for the family and the donor milk is there to provide the milk until the mum's milk supply is established. Hospitals don't always know when they're going to need donor milk. So if a baby is born prematurely and that need arises for donor milk, it's really important to get it to them as soon as we can. And the bikers provide that service as soon as we call them they send us a rider straight away. Good morning, blood bike service. Yes, yeah, absolutely, no problem at all. So I, I take the call from a uh, say hospital, take all the details, then I'll phone the rider, give them the details of what the job is, and then I'll confirm that by text with a job number from the dispatch log. So from the time that the hostel makes the call to our call centre, we basically have 45 minutes to get to the hospital to pick up the goods. Having given my control of the, my estimated time of arrival, I'll, I'll make my way to the destination. Every bike is tracked so that the controller will know exactly where we are at any given point. It can be very anxiety provoking because you're like, come on, I know you landed 10 minutes ago. Why haven't you been in touch? Is everything OK? Because you've got their back. So it is important that you know they're, they're safe and they're well and they're where they should be. <laughs> Controlling. <laughs> And once I get there, I take the sample. We have, usually have an exchange of paperwork. And then equally, when I find, deliver it to its final destination again. So we, we have a, a trail of who's actually been involved in that uh, all the way through. The challenges that we face as motorcyclists is road conditions. Obviously, what we don't want is riders out getting into difficulty because of the weather. That can have an impact on the time that you'll get to your destination. If I have to be slowed down because of bad weather, then they need to know, because otherwise they start worrying that I've not got to where I need to get to. So we, we help out in, in all sorts of areas within the, the health service. So it's not just within hospitals, but it could also be with community nurses. Uh, obviously a community nurse allows a patient to actually remain at home rather than be in hospital. Um, although they're not always good stories. Um, sadly, a little while ago, we were asked to um, provide a service to a young lady who was uh, sadly dying of cancer. And the community nurse decided that it would be a lot better if she spent more time at home rather than hospital. The blood biker is able to go to the home, so if blood samples need to be taken, children aren't taken into hospital. The samples can be taken at home by the community nurse and then the, the biker can take it to the hospital. Which meant that she spent more time with her family, which is where clearly if you are in the latter day, days of your life, you want to be. And one of the traditions we have within Shropshire, Staffordshire, Cheshire blood bikes is that all our bikes have a name and they have a name for a purpose. So one of the bikes actually in the area where she once lived uh, is called Imogen and continues to this day. Like all registered charity, we rely on the support of the public to maintain this service. And I think the biggest thing that we need to do is to make the public aware of the blood bike groups, that we are not funded by the government. We don't work for the National Health Service. We are 100% volunteers. And so anybody that does donate can be assured that every single penny is being spent to the benefit for the work that we're doing. 
And this has a tremendous effect on, on Mr. being able to offer a really effective service for the NHS because obviously NHS is short of money uh, and the fact that we can then not pass any extra costs onto those hospital trusts where these sick patients need these transplants again is a, another huge bonus from blood banks. It's an incredibly rewarding thing to do. We say to people you can sign up for as much or as little as you've got in terms of time. Before you know it you're doing more and more and more because it is so enjoyable. It's a fantastic team of people and we all give our time, you know, free. It's one of those few things I've done in my life that actually everybody's pleased to see you. You can guarantee that whether it be the staff at the, uh, the milk bank or the blood centres or the hospitals, everybody's pleased to see you. People will quite often come up to us at fundraisers and say you, you saved his life and blood bikes were involved and it's, it's really touching when that happens, you know, it's really moving that people come up and share their stories with you. And the thanks we get from the NHS staff as well, because they now recognise that we are just volunteers and we're doing it for free, we're not being paid to do it. Um, and they, they acknowledge us and they're grateful that we do it. So I find it amazing and so heartwarming that they're prepared to give up their time to help patients who are desperately ill. And we wouldn't be able to provide the service that we provide without the support of Shropshire and Staffordshire and Cheshire Blood Bikes.